Well, welcome back again, everybody, to Friday Night Bible Study slash youth group for those of us <clears throat> here in person. We're going to continue our series about destiny tonight, titled, You Have a Destiny for Your Life. And this is just a, a list of scriptures that the Lord gave to me to share. <clears throat> um, we're just going to keep going. We did a message last week. If you missed it, you can go and watch it on Facebook and on YouTube. If you want to turn in this, the scriptures with me, the first scripture for tonight we're going to is John 3.16. We went there last week, but I just felt the Lord has a little bit more to share from this particular scripture. And then we'll move on and see how far we get. Amen? If you're on your device, Bible Gateway is a good resource or the YouVersion Bible app if you need an app. Or if you've got a print Bible at your house, that's perfect too. <laughs> That's how people did it for centuries before this, for the, the advent of the internet. <clears throat> and there's nothing wrong with a good old book, all right? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for everything that you have for us tonight. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. You are our guide. You are our teacher. We rely on you. We trust you, Lord, to, to, to show and tell <laughs> like, you only, like only you can do, to show us your truth to tell us about who you are, Lord, to just show off in our lives. And Father, we just place a demand upon you, upon your spirit, not in an arrogant way, but we want to receive what you have for us. We open our own hearts up, Lord. We just pull on the anointing. We pull on the grace of God to, to just receive what you have for us. Lord, we just thank you for the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation tonight. As we look to you, we just thank you for clarity. We thank you for your word becoming alive to us in a new way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat> amen. John 3.16, reading out of the New Living Translation tonight again. John 3.16, For God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Through who? Through Jesus. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. We talked about <clears throat> God has a destiny for every single person on planet earth. And there's going to be a huge multitude of people who are not going to fulfill that destiny. And... We talked a little bit about it last week. We'll probably get into it a bit more tonight. This idea of predestination and how people misinterpret that, have misinterpreted that over the centuries. Predestination, again, we, we brought up this example, like you're looking at a bus driving along the highway and God's sitting there and you're going to heaven, you're going to hell, you're going to heaven, you're going to hell. That's not what he's talking about, right? And we shared, if you've been predestinated, you've been called, like the invitation has been given out, it's up to you to respond to the invitation. And when you present yourself to God, it's not like he's going to critique you when you arrive and say, mm, let me think for a sec. Are you in? I'm gonna, am I going to let you in? Or am I just going to tell you, all right, you know what? We got no more space. You can go off to the, you know. That's not what predestination means. It means the call has been made. If you show up and God already knew in advance who would show up, simply all that that means. When you show up, you're not going to be graded. You're not going to be critiqued on what you've done. It's just showing up. I answered the call, and it's like you've already been pre-approved. Like, you know, you go to the airport, and there's two lines normally when you go through security. There's TSA pre-approved. Like, you have a, you have a pre-approval pre rating, or whatever they call it, where you can literally just walk through security. You, you flash your TSA pre-approved and they let you through security. You don't have to, you know, take your belt off and put your stuff in the thing and have to go through the, the giant, you know, thing and be searched and all that. You're pre-approved. Predestinated just means that you're pre-approved. 
it's still up to you to go through security, right? You still have to make the choice to receive Jesus. But when you get to that gate, you're allowed to just walk in. You don't have to go through a whole procedure. You don't have to come to God through your own righteousness. You come through Jesus' righteousness. Why? Because you've been predestinated. You've got a clear path. You have a destination in mind that was prearranged. That word destiny, again, destination. John 3.16 again. For God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Everyone who believes in him, not everybody believes in Jesus. And whose choice is that? It's not God's. He's not choosing who is going to believe that Jesus is, who he says he is, and who is not. That's our choice. Where is the predestination in the plan of salvation? He already predestined that Jesus would come to the earth. Right? That was his plan. That wasn't mankind's plan. The predestination, right? The, the, the destination was set in advance. <clears throat> when Adam and Eve fell, God already knew the answer. Verse 17, God sent his son into the world. What does it say? Not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. King James says that through him the world might be saved. That word might is very important. That world or, or may, I think it says. That the world may be saved. In other words, people have a choice to make. Verse 18, there is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. So you die, right? And you have either accepted Jesus or you haven't. These, there's two lines here, like just to bring up that analogy of the airport again. There's two lines that go through this gate. One, you're pre-approved because of the blood of Jesus. One, you're told you have to go back outside. You cannot pass this gate. If you don't have Jesus, verse 18 again, anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. And that's not when you arrive at the gate, you're judged immediately then. No, while you're standing in line, like before you get to the airport, you've already been judged. You're not going to get through that gate. Because you don't have the blood of Jesus covering your sins. You have not accepted the blood of Jesus. You have not accepted the free gift of salvation. You have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Right? You still have to make that choice. And the judgment is based on this fact, verse 19. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. See, one thing that light does is it exposes darkness. So when a person hears about Jesus, even maybe for the first time, or for the tenth time, even for the twenty-fifth time, light comes in and it exposes darkness, and people feel convicted. When people feel convicted, there's only two real responses. You could either accept that and be convicted, or reject it and turn away and become hardened in your heart. Excuse me, so... A couple weeks ago, remember, we talked about symbols for the Word of God. Excuse me. And one of the symbols was a hammer. Yeah. The hammer comes down and the hammer breaks every stubborn rock of resistance, it says in the King James. When the hammer falls, right, the rock either breaks or it built or it huddles up against itself and it, you know, puts on more layers. Right? I'm not break, I'm gonna be stubborn. I'm I'm hiding, you know, in myself. I'm gonna keep, ooh, that hurt, but I'm not gonna give. That's the way people are. You either you break in a good way, you come under that conviction, and it's like, oh, Lord, I see where I've done wrong. Would you come and please forgive me and help me, right? Or you put layers over yourself, and you choose to be stubborn. Verse 20, all who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed, right? You put on layers. You choose to be stubborn. But those who do what is right come to the light, so others can see that they are doing what God wants. Once you come to the light, like he's talking about here, the motivation of your heart changes, and you don't want to just do good for the sake of doing good or showing off and telling people, hey, look at me, look at how important I am, look at how spiritual I am, look at how good of a person I am. You come to Jesus, that light has been shed abroad in your heart, 
all of a sudden your motivation is reaching other people for the Lord. You do what is right so that others can see that you are doing what God wants you to do. And they can see the will of God made manifest in your life. <clears throat> Let's see here. We went to Romans chapter 8 last week, I believe. Let me just look here. Romans 8, 28. Yeah, we went through that last week. <clears throat> Again, if you did not watch last week's, it's on YouTube. I believe it's on Facebook still, but YouTube probably is a better better recording. Let's turn then to Psalm 37. We'll just go down this list and I kept hearing in my heart earlier just receiving all that God has for us. So we're just going to receive all that God has for us. And that's not just for this youth group service or this live stream, but I believe that's something the Lord wants us even for this church, honestly. He wants us to receive all that he has for us. Another thing about conviction, the hammer, when the hammer comes down, the rock either breaks or hardens itself. Again, that's referring to a person's heart. People are not literal rocks. <laughs> and the word of God is not a literal hammer. It's, a, it's, you know, symbolic. It's standing in for something else. So the, the word of God is preached to a human heart, to a person, right? That person either gives way to it or rejects it. And I believe the more that you give way to it, the more God can do in your life. And he wants us to experience all that he has for us. Psalm 37, verse 23. Psalm 37, verse 23. Again, we're talking about destiny tonight. And it's a big word. You know, a lot of, a lot of meaning behind that word. One of the, the definitions of destiny in the world's way of looking at it is you have a predetermined course and that everything that happens along that course was ordained or was fate or was destiny or something. And that's not really the Bible's definition of destiny. Again, we talked about sovereignty. God's in control of the ship. He has a destination in mind. We're getting to that destination, but not everything that happens on the journey is God. He's not the puppet master pulling every string. <laughs> He's not, you know, the one causing deers to jump out in front of people's cars or, you know, it wasn't his decision to drive home drunk that night. He has to work through people the same way that the devil has to work through people. That's why it's so important that we are yielded to God. Psalm 37, verse 23. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall. For the Lord holds them by the hand. Verse 23 again. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. There's a prerequisite to this, to this verse. People quote it all the time. The Lord's directing my steps. You know, you see it in Facebook posts. Everything's going to turn around for my good. There's qualifications to these verses. This does not just apply to every Christian. Because even though they've still, they have given themselves to the Lord, they have salvation, you can experience the blessing of God in your life in one area and not in another area. There's people that have a real good handle on healing, but have a terrible handle on finances. So they're never sick, but they're broke constantly. <laughs> or vice versa. They got tons of money, but they can't get healed for the life of them, you know? And they end up spending all their money to try and get healed. When all they really need is a revelation. And that, it works that way in every area. You know, you could be really, really confident in the area of peace, you know, and how to keep yourself a quiet heart, right, and how to be humble and how to be meek towards other people. And yet, in your own private life, you know, you're a, you're a train wreck. You're an emotional wreck. There's people that know how to put on a show on the outside and be real good, you know, <laughs> vice versa, I should say how to make themselves look better than they really are on the inside. There's people that know how to put on charades, how to put on a mask. And that's not what God wants us to do. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. So in other words, a person who is living in godliness, 
the Lord has the permission to, I could put it that way, to direct that person's steps. Funny thing about directions, you've got to follow directions. Like you put a GPS in your car, and you hear the lady make a left turn in 250 feet or whatever. You know, don't say it like that, but you have to make the left turn, right? <laughs> you come up to the light and you make a right or you do a U-turn, she's going to redirect. She's going to say, hey, you messed up. <laughs> make a left turn up ahead. Then make another left turn. Then make another left turn. So you're back on the right way, you know. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. So there's two prerequisites to, to following this verse properly. Godliness, right, and following directions. You've got to follow the leader. So you're doing things God's way, not your own way. Doing things in His righteousness, with His motivations, not your own righteousness, not your own motivations. Excuse me. And that gives the Lord permission to say, hey, there's a situation coming up. You need to be prepared for it. Start saving money now. Right? Or, hey, you know, there's going to be some symptoms coming to your body soon. Get, you know, studying some healing scriptures. Load your ammo. Right? So that way, when a symptom comes, you're not just blindsided. You, have, you know how to respond. You, you've been feeding yourself on healing scriptures, and you know what to do. And it's not just healing and money. That applies to every area of our lives. There's a wave of, of layoffs coming on the job. Start seeking me, you know, for the blessing of the Lord in your life. Start praying for a, well, start thanking me for a new job, right? And you'll hear something like that, and you'll think, oh, that's got to be the devil. You know, that's, that's, that can't be the Lord. The Lord's not firing me. He's not firing you. <laughs> He's letting you know, hey, this is coming. You know, I believe there's a lot of people if they were more spiritually attuned, COVID-19 would not have taken all of us by surprise. And I believe, you know, not that I was surprised necessarily, but just you could see as the body of Christ as a whole, people make their plans. <laughs> and, you know, they have wedding dates and they've got, um, you know, I, let's, uh, let's say I'm a singer for a band and we had a tour booked for all, you know, of 2020 and all of a sudden all of our tour dates got canceled or whatever. I saw tons of posts like that. You know, of course, wedding dates got canceled and postponed. That just makes me think to myself, if we were spiritually attuned enough <laughs> to the Lord, he would have been able to tell us more about what's coming. And it really just made me realize we've got to check up on ourselves. The Lord said the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. And not necessarily there's going to be a worldwide pandemic that's going to, you know, derail everybody's plans. He's not necessarily going to come flat out with that, but he's going to be impressing on your heart, hey, be prepared. <laughs> Times are only going to get tougher. And there's a lot of people that want to just live their life from the standpoint of it's going to get easier all the time. If there's one thing I've figured out about life, life is not just constantly going up or down. It's got ups and downs. It's a, it's a roller coaster. And again, that's not the Lord piloting the ship. That's just the devil is doing all that he can, working through people. Yeah. If a person in leadership of a country, come on, <laughs> is yielded to the Lord, it's going to be easier for everybody. But if the leader of a country is not yielded to the Lord, it's going to be harder for everybody. So much of Christianity, that's why he says to pray for people, pray for our, our leaders, those in authority. Christianity, it, it settles us no matter what the circumstances are out there. If, if the world is up, we're still going to be up because we're always up because the Lord is our standby, right? He's, he's the one who sets the standard for us because we're Christians. But if the world tanks, <laughs> we should still be up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like look at a graph, like a curve. The world goes up and down. We should just always be at peak performance. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. I'm not saying it's going to be easy all the time. <laughs> Again, if there's one thing I've learned, it's not always easy. But you should be able to experience the blessing of the Lord. You should be able to experience what one verse says, the fruits of righteousness. 
the, the benefits of doing things God's way, regardless of the way the economy is, or regardless of the way you know your family acts around you, or regardless of the people at your workplace, or whatever, we have the ability to receive God's best when the world is at its worst. I'll say that again. We have the ability to receive God's best when the world is at its worst. How do we do that? The Lord directs the steps of the godly. We act in righteousness and godliness, and we follow directions. When you hear his voice, you obey. And you don't even rationalize yourself out of it. You just become so spiritually attuned. When you hear his voice, you just obey. The better you, you get at that, the better you get at hearing the voice of the Lord and obeying it, Sooner rather than later, you'll notice it affect all areas of your life. Like, you know, if he says something simple like, you know, get the trash ready because to, to take out the trash before your mom tells you to or whatever. Just a simple little thing like that. And then you watch that example build and build and build. And when he's, you know, speaking to you and you're praying in your bedroom one night and it's like, you need to go apply for this job because you'll get this job and it's going to double your pay or whatever. Like you do stuff that I, I hate to say it this way, but the stuff that really doesn't matter, <laughs> you prove yourself in those things and that will build and build until God presents you with something he knows you're going to be faithful in. If you're not going to be faithful in the little, you're not going to be faithful in the much. God wants us to be faithful in the much. I believe there's a whole lot of Stuff in this world that he wants to give to Christians, but Christians aren't ready for it. We have not, we, and I mean not you specifically or me specifically, but just as a whole, there's a lot of people who have not proven themselves faithful in the little things. We become content just to, to work a nine to five and to just live our lives the way we want to live them. We become comfortable, we become lazy. We stop seeking the Lord on a continual basis. And you watch the priority list start to change. Right? And then eventually it's no longer even a chapter a day keeps the devil away. You haven't read your Bible in a couple months. And you're like, well, okay. <laughs> and you pull it off the shelf and there's a layer of dust on it. And you're like, how did that get there? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1 and verse 3. chapter 1 and verse 3. God has a destiny for each and every single one of our lives. In other words, it's a destination He wants us to arrive at. There is a certain thing in this life, in our time on planet Earth, that we were created for. And I believe the way that it works, some well, part of the mechanics of how this whole thing works you know, in Hebrews it talks about the word, the um, the Lamb of God that was slain, right, before the foundations of the world. Like, before the problem was there, God already had the answer in his mind. It's the same thing with us. <laughs> he already knows what's going to happen in the times in which you live. That's why he said to Esther, you were born for such a time as this, right? And that's not God consigning people to a hard life. Esther was living in a dark time, taken from her family, right? And everything she knew and loved was stripped from her. And that wasn't God's plan necessarily, but she was born for such a time as she lived in. In other words, God already knew what would happen, and he prepared her, spiritually speaking, in advance. So that way, when her course, when her life intersected with the problem, she had the answer. The Lamb of God was slain, right, from before the foundation of the world. So when the time was right, the Roman Empire and crucifixion became a thing, right? All the prophecies lined up, and God sent Jesus because the problem and the, and the answer can now collide. It's the same thing with healing, with miracles, with receiving finances, whatever. You express your faith, and the power is already there to meet you. He already has the answer provided before the problem arises, Ephesians chapter 
chapter 1, verse 3. Ephesians 1, verse 3. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Even before he made the world, again, before the problem existed, the answer has already been provided. Before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. And people, again, they get out of that, this weird interpretation that Jesus is picking and choosing who's coming to salvation and who's not. That's not what he's saying. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. There's just a whole lot of indoctrination and preconceived notions that people have to get over. It's been ingrained in society for hundreds of years. The devil has worked his, his way into these things. And people think that it's church, that, that it's Christian, that it's not. It, it is not. <laughs> So much of, of this idea of religion that the world knows is not true Christianity. It's traditions, it's guilt, it's condemnation, it's a form of Christianity that's been robbed of all of its power, that's been robbed of all of its ability to transform a life, and we've relegated it to just a, a bunch of do's and don'ts. And people grow up, I don't want to go to church anymore. I, you know, I, I did that when I was a kid, but I hated it. I felt horrible sitting there in the hard you know, wooden pews and just hearing about how bad my life is and stuff. How much I'm a sinner. That was not the way that it was supposed to be. <laughs> Again, we talked about praying in the Holy Ghost earlier. You do Christianity right, it's exciting. It makes you happy. <laughs> the, the one thing above anything else that even it's in the Bible, rejoice for your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That one thought alone is good for the rest of your life. Like, no matter what bad stuff happens to you, <laughs> rejoice because your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So you could have the hardest journey on planet Earth there ever was, like Esther's story times ten. Like, you never got back what was stolen from you. And I don't believe that's God's plan for anybody. You could see all the stories where bad stuff happened to people in the Bible. It's not God doing it to people. It's the devil coming alongside doing it to people. And God takes that circumstance and twists it around and gets something good out of it. It wasn't his plan in the first place, but he works with what he has. People make choices. People have a thought life. And often their thoughts are undisciplined and they wander and they think about whatever they want to do. That gives, door, that gives access to the devil, right? In Job's life, he feared that his family was going to walk away from the Lord. And his fear opened the door for the devil to come in. And do whatever he wanted to do. That's what the Bible says. The thing that, that Job feared came upon him. The thing with Esther. Through no fault of her own, right? All that she had, her family, her, her heritage, the land that she lived in, all that stuff was taken from her. That wasn't God's choosing. And yet, even though it happened, she became queen of that nation, right? She was used of God to... to save her entire nation of people, her entire ethnic heritage, all the Jews of, their, of that day. And you could see the devil like um, orchestrating things behind the scenes in Esther's life, in Jesus' life, in Moses' life. Kill all the baby boys, right? Kill all the kids. Because I know that there's a Messiah coming, and if he comes, I'm done. He thought he had won. Kill all the babies. There's no way that anybody escaped that. And yet he didn't realize that an angel had appeared to Joseph and said, go to, ne go to Egypt, right? You could just see behind the scenes, there's so much. <laughs> Again, we're in a war for the hearts of people, the devil and God, and they work through other people. Ephesians 1, 4 again. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Jump down to chapter... Actually, let me see here. Jump down to verse 9. Ephesians 1, verse 9. And we might wind down with 
this. Maybe one more verse. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 9. God has now revealed to us his mysterious plan regarding Christ. A plan to fulfill his own good pleasure. And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ. Everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For He chose us in advance, and He makes everything work out according to His plan. He has a plan, right? That big word sovereignty again. He is sovereign. He's got a plan. He's got a destination in mind. And He makes everything work out according to that plan. He's not the one working the stuff that's happening to people, but he'll make it work out, get it, according to his plan. So regardless of all the bad stuff, regardless of all the evil of a person's, you know, in a person's day in which they live, the ultimate goal is still going to be settled by God. Job lost a whole bunch of stuff, and yet at the end of his story, God gave him back twice of what he lost. Basically just to slap the devil. <laughs> Like, he feared he opened the door to the devil, and I saw what you did, but just because I'm a good God, here's double what he lost. So not only was he the wealthiest man before his you know, tragedy struck his life, he was double that man after because of the goodness of God. <laughs> not because God had that out for him, you know, for him to experience all those bad things. If he didn't put himself in a place of fear, he would not have experienced those things. Right? If Esther chose not to be faithful to the call of God, she would have failed, and God would have had to find another answer. And she would have missed out on the blessing for all of eternity. Esther is in heaven now with that story accredited to her. And there's a whole nation of people, every, every Jew, really, and there's a lot of quote-unquote Gentiles who are alive nowadays who have ancestors back to those people that don't even know about it. There's a whole group of people alive on planet Earth today that can directly trace their very existence to her obedience. If she said no, if she did not fulfill the call of God, and the devil was able to kill all these Jewish people, right? It would have set back the plan of salvation however long you know, it took. And yet she was faithful and God was able to do what he wanted to do. It's so important. One more verse, and we'll wind down with this. Ephesians 2, verse 10. Just flip the page. Ephesians 2, verse 10. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. He has good things in store for us. Not just to bless us with, but for us to, to do for other people. Last week I even mentioned it, or a couple weeks ago, whatever it was. When you get born again, you get a target on your back. Right? And again, that's not something you preach to a, to a baby Christian. Because it, it doesn't make you feel good. It's just, you know, warning you. <laughs> You've come to salvation now. You're going to have to learn how to fend for yourself. Realize you are called. You have a destiny. The devil's going to come after you and try to stop it. I believe that the Lord had a variety of people he could have chosen to fulfill Esther's story. And yet Esther was chosen. Why? Because she was faithful. There were plenty of virgin girls in Jesus' time, but God chose Mary. Why? Because she was found faithful. Even at 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, however old she was, God saw the quality of in her to be the, the mother of the Messiah and there were women who were still virgins 20, 30, 40 years old, however long right? And those people did not have the qualifications and it had nothing to do with age or even life experience it had to do with faithfulness there is a list of good things that we have been planned for for such a time as this, right? God didn't start COVID-19 and yet he's the one who's bringing us through it. And if we would choose to be faithful to the call, regardless of the bad stuff that's happening in the world, 
I believe when this COVID-19 becomes COVID end, you know, whatever, <laughs> it's just over. <laughs> There's a place that God can promote us to. You pass the test. The devil came at you with everything that he had and that you were victorious. The Bible says in Revelations that there's a crown given to those who overcome. Real quickly, and I'll end with this. I had a, if you could say it was a vision or a dream, I don't know what you would call it. I was standing praying in my room a couple months ago. And I just all of a sudden had this awareness that there was a crown put on my head. Because I could feel it like it was heavy. And it came on my head and then a thing came around my shoulders and it felt like a cloak or a cape and it just came on my shoulders and I'm like Lord what is this like I'm, what am I experiencing right now this doesn't just happen every day <laughs> like I go into my bedroom and I pray and I pray in tongues and I pray in English whatever and I don't always have a supernatural experience you know what I mean and I'm, I'm praying there and he spoke to my heart that's the crown of the overcomer There's things that we have to go through in this life, right? It's not God giving you the test. It's not God giving you the trials, but you have to overcome this stuff. There's a whole group of Christians that are going to be in heaven that have this crown of being an overcomer. That regardless of what the world threw at you, you chose to rise above. You chose to come at it with everything that you could. And you might say, well, I didn't live through the Holocaust. You know, I didn't have to live through the horrors of Nazi Germany. I, the thing that I overcame was nowhere near as big as the thing that they overcame. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's whatever you had to overcome in your life, did you do it or not? I'm not a Jewish woman in the 1500 BC, whatever, in Esther's time. That's not who I am, right? My experience is not going to be Esther's experience. And yet my faithfulness can be her faithfulness. I can pattern my, my life after hers. All right? There's so much to this. We'll probably continue next week, at least one more week. Let's pray as we close. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for revelation, Lord. Wisdom. That we don't have to read your word alone. That we can experience all the good that you have in store for us, Lord. In the midst of dark times, in the midst of all the evil that the world has to offer, you have life. <laughs> And we can live at the highest quality of life when the world is at its worst. We have your best when the world is at its worst. And Father, we just thank you for the rest of our night. We thank you for a blessing upon all of us who are here and all those who are watching live and on the replay later. We just pray a special blessing on those who are watching. Thank you, Lord, that you've got us in the palm of your hand, that you provide for us, you protect us, that healing has been provided for us. Father, we just return and say thank you. We love you. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for watching out there. We'll be back again Sunday morning, 10 a.m. And Wednesday night, 7 p.m. For uh, Yeah, we're still in the book of Galatians. And then next Friday we'll continue with this series about destiny. All right? Thank you so much for watching. We love you.